Well, there'll be no difficulty getting my guest today to talk. No monosyllabic responses from him. Monosyllabic? Monosyllabic responses from him. He's a professional talker. You hear him afternoons on that big blowtorch station. And you'll hear him here in just a moment. Fred Hansberger, of course. Also today, a quick perusal of she who would be president. By the gall of that gal, Liddy Dole putting her manicured toenails into the roiling political waters. Let's share some first impressions. It's interactive, of course. It's Cullen on cable. Hello there, Fred Hansberger joining us in just a moment. Just saw him poke his head in the door. Moment. That wasn't his head, that was somebody else's. Anyway, he'll be here. So that should be fun. Fred and I are not necessarily in agreement on an awful lot of things, so we should have a few go-rounds and hope you will uh, get in on the uh, contretemps. Does that word make sense? <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me lately. I've been using words and I don't know, I'm throwing them and peppering my, my speech with words that I vaguely think might work but don't know if they do and what's amazing is no one ever calls you on it so might not have been right. Anyway, uh, as we wait for the big news to start unrolling, uh, namely of course the Senate trial of the President of the United States which still apparently is very up in the air as to uh, exactly how that thing's going to proceed. The Republicans cannot get it together, but uh, surely uh, at this point next week we'll be in it, whatever it will prove to be. Meanwhile, this week's been taken up with a lot of speculation about who's running and who isn't. On the local scene, we hear that uh, Bob Cranmer uh, is likely to announce today that he says, forget it, you know, I can see the writing on the wall. And strangely, the writing on the wall is that his, uh, his campaign head, the guy who was heading his campaign, in all likelihood is, go is going to be running for the county exec position that Cranmer thought he was heading his campaign to run for himself. He's very confused. Anyway, uh, probably it'll be Jim Roddy rather than Bob Cranmer. So on the local front, there's going to be some very interesting developments. But nationally, uh, we're starting to hear about Liddy Dole. Where have we heard these names before? George Bush and Dole. Could see it again for the Republicans, only the faces will change, the names will stay the same. Liddy Dole, though, is not intending to run on a vice presidential slot. She wants it all. Liddy Dole wants to be president. She's being coy right now about that, but she has resigned her position as head of the Red Cross so that she can start up in earnest. Anyway, she popped up on the Today Show today. And for those of you who haven't had an opportunity to see her questioned about all this, uh, since she's extricated herself somewhat from the uh, Red Cross, uh, take a look at, at Liddy Dole, who could be your president, and see how you react to that, looking at this woman as a potential president. We call it back talk. You look, I look, we talk. Let's go. Thank you. As I've talked with people around the country, and um, I've, I've been very honored that a number of people have approached me about running, I believe that, uh, that the, the time is right, uh, that, that in our lifetime we will see a woman as president of this country. Mrs. Dahl, I'm sure you're going to be asked about this in the upcoming not going to comment on this morning. But you asked about now. Okay. Now, the enemy is Katie had tried to ask her something a little more, a little more meated, and then Liddy had batted her way, saying, as you know, the Red Cross. So she, while she's announced her intention to resign from the Red Cross, she still has the cover of the Red Cross, perfectly neutral organization. We don't. So she, she's in a marvelous position now of putting herself out there 
and only able to handle the softest of softest of questions. There cannot be anything of any substance at all because she can bat it away with this, as you know, the Red Cross. And uh, I could see Katie during the course of the interview thinking, well, uh, darn it, I'm going to try it again. The woman wants to be present and she got, she got brushed off again. Now, uh, you know, Liddy handling it like uh, she's capable of handling it right now, but here's something that, I, that she's got to lose. Well, Liddy is just a classic Southern woman. But the little giggle at the end, when she finally slapped her down a second time, giggle's got to go. You can't be the president and giggle. That's right. Gotta go. Here we go. Whoop! Come on. Come An on. appropriate time. On down the road. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. On down the road. <laughs> you can't do that and be president. Let me ask you about your husband. Obviously, he ran for president. Has uh -huh. he given you any advice in terms of your own potential campaign down the road? Well, you know, Bob uh, realizes how, what a personal decision it is. First of all, a very personal decision to decide to leave an organization, which has been a mission field for me, where I've had the honor of working with people who are absolutely committed to making a difference for others uh, and who uh, have sacrificed in many ways to do that. And so it's with great sadness that I leave the Red Cross. But also making such a, a, an enormous decision as whether or not to run for president of the United States is a very personal decision. I think that uh, Bob's made no secret of the fact that he thinks I'd be a good candidate, <laughs> and I appreciate that. He's, he's very supportive. Uh, and I think, um, you know, I kind of think he feels um, he'd make a great first spouse. I was going to say, <laughs> we give him a job as campaign manager or something? <laughs> oh, all, you know, right now I'm just focused on, uh, on wrapping up for the next two weeks at the... All right, all right, all right, wrap it up. Perhaps. Speaking of wrap it up, wrap it up. Now, that last one was a hearty laugh. That's not a giggle. Hearty laughs are okay, but giggle. After making a statement, you don't, <laughs> you don't do it. You ought to know better. So, I don't know. Who the heck is she? I, we, uh, we don't know a dang thing about her stands on any issues, really. We're suspecting uh, she is a social conservative, uh, and because of her status as a female uh, could well pull women who have deserted the Republican Party with, uh, with uh, greater alacrity than have the men uh, pull them back into the Republican camp. She could be a very strong candidate uh, for the Republicans. So uh, I have maintained, and I believe I said it here yesterday, that when it comes to breaking down these kinds of barriers, these radical breaks with the past and tradition, it is the party of conservatism that has to do it because it seems somehow safer. So you can't have a democratic woman as the first woman president. And you couldn't have had a liberal democratic president opening up red China and uh, establishing relations. All of those things have to go to the conservative Republicans to push because it makes it a safer, safer step into frightening territory. John, hi. How you doing? John. Yes. How you doing, Liz? I'm doing okay. Uh, this, as I watch this whole Elizabeth Dole thing transpire, I, I got to wonder who she's kidding. I don't think there's a, a rat chance that she's going to be, number one, get the... Uh, Republican nomination, and two, even by some miracle she did, uh, end up being president. Why? I just don't think the Republican Party has developed enough consciousness to support a woman during a long uh, presidential candidacy. Well, I, I would think the party can support a winner. Why can't, you mean they really have a problem if the winner is wearing a dress? Well, if you take a look at, if that being the case, don't you think that the Wilson guy from California last time around would have been the quote-unquote winner, having had all the tools probably to go up against the Clinton, or at least put up a better show than Bob Dole did? Well, Dole was there because he, you know, the, again, because he'd been a war horse, he'd tried, it was sort of his shot. It's nobody's shot now. Any, it, this one is up for grabs. Uh, and, and that's why I, th I think... They'll go with whoever looks to be a winner. Now, if she enters some primaries 
and shows really well if it sh if she shows that she can attract people and be an attractive and powerful candidate i mean unless the republicans are stark raving mad they'll they'll go with her so we're looking at elizabeth dole maybe uh george bush maybe and who else well, those, I would argue that those are the two biggies right now. You got Dan Quayle saying he's coming back, Lamar Alexander saying he's coming back, uh, Gary Bauer saying he's going to do it. You've got somebody in New Hampshire, what's his name? Uh, Dave, I don't know what's his Davis name. Davis or something like that. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, I, I mean, the, 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 the bigger names are uh, Bush, Dole, Quayle, Bauer. Wow. But if they could get Colin Powell in there, you know, everything's, everything's a different story then. So you could see something like that. I, I bet they'd like Colin Powell. Correct. And then instead of having the first black woman, you could have the first, I mean, white, white woman, you'll have the first black man. Do you think, that, you think he can win? Maybe. Who do you, who do you look like to get in on the Democratic side other than Gore? Anybody with any sense? I mean, he, the way his machinery's in place now, do you think, uh, other than some type of internal collapse on his part, I don't know. Gore does not in, Gore does not intrigue me, and uh, everybody else I see does not necessarily intrigue me. I, I'll have to learn about them more. There's no stars I, either place. If I can, I just don't see anybody. Thanks, Liz. Yeah. Bye. Depressing. I'll tell you, that's what it is. It's just dang depressing. Well, then find out who Fred Hansberger wants to be the next president lurking around the building somewhere. Fred Hansberger, talkster extraordinaire, joining me and you in just a moment. Here we are. Well, I guess it's just me. I'm not talking of myself in the royal we. It's just that I'm seated next to Fred Hansberger. Hi, Lynn. He's, Good morning. Hi. <laughs> Good morning. I know. You're having a tough time waking up. I'm having up a tough I'm time waking up. And then, uh, and then on top of it, I'm in there putting on makeup. I was putting on my uh, uh, mascara. Okay. My, yeah. They're my real lashes, I'm, but I was I'm putting glue on not, them. I, I, wouldn't... Was, I was putting stuff on him and then immediately after putting stuff on him I went oh. <gasps> now do you know what happens if you've just put mascara on and you sneeze I've think never had that I've never had that experience well think about what happens when you sneeze well, your, your eyes close yeah, that's right. right your eyes close so all that goo that was up here and it like was all over here and if you look closely there's like little black no, it looks spots okay on. to me oh, yeah. it looks fine to me Yesterday was a bad hair day. Today I got mascara down here. Women have problems, you know. It's bad hair, bad eyelashes. By oh, we have to do some more hair. And, well, I put some makeup on though. You did, and I, I can did. see that you did. It's very nice I don't job. I want to try to look good. So you don't have a problem putting on makeup on? No, you don't, you don't I did like... it for how many years? It was. It's not bad. I don't have a problem. I have to because you know they say that the TV makes you look what uh, 25 pounds. And, but to me, I think there's a point of no return where they say we can't make this guy look any fatter. So it just. <laughs> <laughs> so I put my uh, makeup on. No, right. and all, really, this man is, uh, is spelt. It's the television. Yeah, that's, that's exactly I mean. it. I'm and 150 I am a, pounds. I'm blonde. I'm a blonde babe. <laughs> it's, I just, it's, isn't it amazing what TV does to gorgeous human beings like us? Uh, God almighty. Okay, I was listening to you yesterday after I did my show driving home. Okay. What is this? What I put on the radio, and yeah. I hear as if it's, a, it's done. We all know it now. Bill Clinton's love child? Yeah, well, uh, come on. Chelsea has a brother. 
And she did, she's, for the longest time, she's an only child. And I know the problems of being an only child, because I am one, and, and it can be difficult. But now she has a brother she can turn to. And where did you learn this? Well, this was in the New York Post, Sunday front page, New York Post. Well, this is not new. You know this. I didn't know. No, this has been going around for a long time. In fact, did you see the movie Primary Colors? Yeah, so it's well, Primary Colors well, that's, comes to life. That's exactly right. Well, didn't you see where he bedded down with the, the black woman and they had a child? That was in Primary Colors. I mean, the, the movie was based on Bill Clinton. And uh, this, so this has been going around. The, the woman has been identified. The child has well, been identified. Well, she sold her story to the Globe a long time ago, and the uh -huh. Globe, the Globe apparently is not seen as that big of a deal. But the Star is, because the Star has come. The Star has been. I don't know. Who knows? But it was in the Star. Now it's in the New York Post. And of course, Matt Drudge, on the on the Drudge Report on the internet, who has not been wrong, I don't think yet. Uh, but at any rate, uh, the deal is that uh, and she passed the lie detector test. That I mean, you know, Bill Clinton's a wild guy. Oh, yeah. And, 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 uh, but when did this happen? So how old is this child? Uh, 13. He's got a 13-year-old yeah. boy? Boy. Got a 13-year-old boy. Chelsea's brother. She's got a brother. Yeah, right. And apparently when he was governor of Arkansas, and he had a log cabin that apparently he had all these soirees in, and she said, I wasn't the only one. Sometimes he'd bring another hooker in, too. We'd have a good time. Oh, so she was a hooker. That's right. She's a prostitute. Lady of the night professional. So he would pay for his dalliances with her. That's the, that's her. the uh, line. Yeah, and uh, she, she said this a long time ago. Nobody's listened to her. She sold her story to the Globe. She passed the lie detector test. Now she's given DNA. Her son's given DNA. And they're going to match it with the uh, The DNA the they already DNA. have? Yeah. They are. I mean, is this all true? Or yes, is this, this, I mean, it's not exactly like the greatest sources. I, the New York Post. Post. New York Post. Front page Sunday it's paper. A, it's Go a tabloid. Internet, you can see it. Wow. Yeah. Just because it opens that way. So what? I mean, I have to tell you, would it surprise me? No, it's not going to no. surprise anybody, and nobody cares, because this is what we've come to expect from Bill Clinton, so long as we're doing all right. That's right. So long as I'm... He's doing so the business. So long as the economy's okay. And he's doing the people's cares? business. He's the most admired man in America. I wonder if that's most men saying he's the most admired oh, man. Oh, who said because he's... Who are these Last week, dope? I was even on vacation last week, the most admired man, and I think Let it's a bunch you. of men who admire him because he gets away with everything they want to get away with. I really don't think that's it. I think they ask people who have not one operative brain cell <laughs> in their heads. You know what I did? I went out, I went out to the, uh, I took my microphone out to the Market Square one day, asked 30 people. I said, What's, what happens to Bill Clinton if he's impeached? And everyone said he's out, he's out. Everyone except three knew that they went to the trial and said, nobody knew, nobody knows. Nobody knows nothing. N nobody knows nothing, but you know what? Fred does. Fred Hansberger knows a lot and he's talking. I know. I fake it. Yes. Well, that's a, that's sort of a yes. Men do that. That's why they don't ask directions. I know a little bit too, but I'm willing to ask directions, and I fake it sometimes too. We'll be back. Hey, talk to us if you want. Three 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 PCNC. The official transportation provider of Cullen on Cable is Pittsburgh Limousine, the one clear choice in transportation. If they Welcome. It is filthy here. You can feel free no, to. I'm just, uh, no, I'm it just is. dusting it's off. I'm, I'm kind of like that. I, you know, go, I, I have this little brush. When I go on the console on the radio, I have this brush that I brush off to get rid of Cygnus ashes. And uh, you've been in there. It's yeah, pretty disgusting. dirty. Disgusting. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, Fred Hansberger, Lynn I'm Cullen, Lynn and. Cullen. Um, would you say we're inalterably uh, opposed on almost any issue you want to bring yeah, up? Yeah, but every time I come on the show, we get along so well. It's like unbelievable. Okay, what do you want to fight about? We were on some party and we were getting along well. And oh, it's sickening. Wife, it I was. Know. I'm saying, because I, uh, I listen to you, I'm, I can't believe, I can't believe. I mean, I don't want to get personal, but <laughs> since you brought it up, and since you <laughs> talked about it, I can't believe you don't let your son eat Oreos. I mean, to me, that's the, that is. No, I just can't. You know what? We're not eating these because these are bad people. Oh, I heard that already. I'm, I'm like pounding on the radio. You've got to be kidding me. No, we won't eat Oreos and we won't eat Chips Ahoy. That's the first thing I, first of all, I grew up on Oreos. Oreos are great things. It's, a great, it's, it's one of those great comfort foods. There's Hydrox. He's no, not no, Hydrox, no, the Hydrox is not the same. And I've had Hydrox and I've gone there. I said, this what, is not an Oreo. What, do you think you're going to have to go to a shrink in 10 years? Yes, I, I do, because my mother would not let me eat Oreo cookies. Because, we drive because, by that Nabisco uh, plan and I say, honey, smell. Uh, I don't smell anything, Mom. I said, right, because happens. they closed it down and they well, threw those good people out of work and they were doing their jobs. They were doing their jobs. In fact, they were doing their better jobs. In fact, it was a, a real good union. They were, it was, everything was going well. well. They were doing it too well. Fine. I still don't have to buy their stupid. I love A1 sauce. Turns out they made that uh, too. Yeah, now milk I bones. I buy two milk bones for my dogs. Anything. <laughs> I'm looking for Nabisco now. <laughs> because you won't let your son eat Oreos. 
I'm looking for Nabisco. I told him if he wants Oreos, he can buy them with his own money. Oh. I'm not buying. <laughs> Unbelievable. You're scarring your child for life. <laughs> the other day, the other day is a treat. He was homesick. I, I got him some animal crackers and came home. And he, he, I said, here. And he looked at it, and his eyes got real big. He said, Mom, and pointed to the little uh. corner that I hadn't noticed. Nabisco, yeah. he says. I said, oh, darn. He said, can I eat them? I said, sure. I mean, well, I bought them. You right. can eat them. But okay. he thinks it's a game. He thinks it's a lark. He loves it when well, I... Yeah. When, he's in, when he's an analysis, when he's 30 years old, tell me about your childhood. My mother would let me eat Oreos. It was some... <laughs> in my dream, I see that triangle floating around in my head. <laughs> there are certain things you do on principle, Fred. Okay, sure. It's not going to change a thing. It's not going to do anything. Doesn't it doesn't matter. You, no, just because it, it makes you feel good. And that's what matters to folks like you. If it makes me feel, it doesn't matter if it doesn't do anything. I'll give this homeless person a dollar in the street. Makes me feel good. It doesn't matter that person going to use that dollar to go buy drugs or booze. Right. Which isn't going to help them. So you walk by him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm, and not because I'm cold and, and heartless. Because? Because giving them a dollar is not going to help them. Mm-hmm. It's not going to make, it makes you feel good. That's no, it great. doesn't. Oh, no, it doesn't. Ah, don't say that to me because it does not. It does not. It doesn't make you feel good to give a, the homeless person a dollar? No. As a matter of fact, I resent it. <laughs> I do. But you have I to, got, don't you? Well, let me tell you. I was taking some money out of a Mac uh, machine the other day, and a homeless guy was sitting right there, and he was saying to my back, Merry Christmas. Yeah. And I'm getting my money. Merry uh, Christmas. Uh, uh, and I'm thinking, uh, let me at least turn around with some money in my hand. I'm getting annoyed. I, he's doing a pretty good yeah. business there, and I, I know, as you know, that if you really want, I could get him a uh, get him give him some food. Mm -hmm. But it's in ch chances are he's going to use it for right mm -hmm. alcohol right, or or drugs. That's right. I gave him a buck. But I knew it. You couldn't. You couldn't. You it had to do it. It didn't make me feel good. You had it. Yeah, it did. You couldn't. I you felt guilty if you didn't do it. Good. You felt guilty I, if you didn't do it. I, I'm an easy mark. Yeah. Well. Okay. Just like the people. Who want on Christmas Day and Thanksgiving Day, I want to help feed the homeless. I want to help feed the homeless. You know that the folks get so many, the Light of Life Mission, Salvation Army, get so many people that want to go out there and they say, okay, if you really want to help, we need you in the back making sandwiches for the people. That... Well, I don't want to do that. I want to be serving the homeless. Oh, I'm not. Like... I want to be serving yeah, the yeah, homeless. Right. They want to get something for it. They want to, right, yeah, they want right. to feel good. Well, you would feel good in the back room. Well, most people them. don't feel good in the back room making sandwiches. They right. want to be out there so they can yeah, be there. I guess the reason I gave him the money <laughs> is I didn't want him to think I was a, a, a hard-hearted person. You know, Lynn Cullen was it here taking money out of the Mac machine. Yeah. She couldn't it even give me a dollar. It mattered to me that yeah, he got, yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. you know, but... I know. I, it, mm -hmm. oh. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. Is this Carmen? Carmen? Yo. Go. Oh. Hello? Hello? Oh, hi. What'd we say? Yo, go, and hello. Yo, baby. Hey, I got a question for Fred. Yep. I've never been able to get through on his radio show, if you don't mind. Oh, really? Okay? Okay. Uh, question is, uh, if you turn the argument around on his head, then and Clinton said that he had sex with Monica, and then it was revealed that, well, he didn't have sexual intercourse, I mean, I suppose they'd get him on perjury for saying he had sex when actually he didn't have sexual intercourse. I mean, Monica's still a virgin as far as Bill is concerned. I mean, because they didn't have the intercourse. That's, you know. Yeah, if you want to dissect the sexual, but, but it really is not about sex. It's about the honesty of the President of the United States. It's about the honesty of the man who, who well, well, swore to I preserve, said, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. He is correct in saying that he oh. didn't have sex. Mm. He, which is why he's the most admired man in America, because most <laughs> men say, man, this is great. He's just defined the rules for us, and now we know what the deal is. And I have so many women call on the show who want to say, well, you know, he's okay. It's this woman, and it's fantastic. It's just, I had a woman yesterday call the show, and she said, well, if that woman was a prostitute, then, then he shouldn't be, because if, if this all turns out to be true, then Bill Clinton, who is, who's going after deadbeat dad, deadbeat, he's the biggest deadbeat dad in America. He is the number one deadbeat dad in America. If he knows, if he knew he had the child. He knew he had the child. And this woman said, well, she's a prostitute. It should be up to her. I would love to have people, I'd love, women, men would love to find women like that. The excuse, oh, it's okay, everybody has an affair. Oh, it's okay, you do, oh, that's okay. Is it okay, Lynn? No. no I didn't think so. No, See, we agree guy, on too much. The guy's a cad. Okay.
<laughs> the guy's a cad, but he was doing, I, I, I thought, an okay job as president, and he should be let to do his job as president, yeah, and really? I didn't need to know about this. The man had no stuff. crises. The man had no crises. He had no well, wars. So? He, had I was, he was Except doing creative things. Some creative things. He bombed yeah. Iraq only because he wanted oh, to take the please. heat off. That's the truth. Yeah. Wag the dog. Mm -hmm. Wag, Wag the, the dog. dog. Oh, I am convinced. Wag the, you realize, I mean, you look at his presidency, and you yeah. see it in terms of Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, you said, well, you saw... Of uh, whatever primary colors, primary colors yeah. and now wag, wag the, the dog. dog. That's right. I believe it. I, you go on the talk show. I don't know about you, but I go on the talk show, and I, I truly believe the things that I say. But you, 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 you go and you have fun with. It. I was truly just angry when he bombed Iraq. Mm -hmm. Just filled with anger. Was was Reagan wagging the dog when he went into Grenada three days after all the Marines got blown up in Beirut? Well, why is he blamed for the Marines in Beirut? It's a terrorist attack. I mean, because they were not well secured, well, they, our defenses right. were really lousy, so. and he was taking it on the chin yeah, after, was, the, after those deaths. And reason all of a winning. sudden, we find out there's this great threat to the United States called Grenada. We had Americans, and we danger. went, yeah, American medical students. Yeah. We need to be, we need to rescue them. Stupid medical students who couldn't get into an American medical school. <laughs> we didn't kill anybody <laughs> down there. <laughs> we go in and bomb and kill how many citizens yeah. of, of Iraq? But it wasn't wag the dog. Only, oh. de only Democrats wag. That's right. That's true. Well, it's Fred Hansberger. What? <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm told in my ear to get out. All right. You know what that means? You want me we'll to go to a break. No, oh. no, no, no. You stay. I'm right. getting out. We're, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk about some other things on which we, I'm sure, can find a level of agreement. Nah. Oh, stop with that stuff. What are you looking for? I got page. I'm over. Fred and I are talking. We're trying to figure out what we can uh, disagree on because we do agree on a lot. Plan B. I, you know, and I can't figure this out. I, I don't understand why I listen to your radio show and get so upset, and then when I come and I see you in person, we get along so well. I don't. I, don't, know. I well, can't figure that out. What do you want me to there's do? Something like, no, well, I don't know, but there's something. There's something wrong there. <sighs> there's something going on. Because I, I just, I don't understand this. Because we're sitting here, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And I listen to your radio show and you listen to mine mm -hmm. and you get honked off. Yes, we both yes. hate listening to the other's radio yeah, shows. I, yeah, when, when you were on the other station, I'd be shaving in the morning and I could not shave. <laughs> I could not shave because of how upset I was getting. Isn't that good? Well, yeah, it is good. I can't call. You know, no, so, and they wouldn't let you Yeah, on. I know. That's right. So, that's... Uh, all, right, all right. Just calm down. I want your blood pressure going up. County exec. This is going to be fun, this election. It's going to be fun. Okay. Who do you see as the Democrat? Oh, I think Cyril. Yeah, Cyril. Cyril I think actually. he's going to make short work of DeWita, and that's it. Cyril, mm -hmm. who's the Republican? Uh, it could be Dunn, because the Republicans still nah. like Dunn. No, the Republicans love Dunn. They think he'd been, think he's been done in by Cramer, and Cramer couldn't win his dog catcher. No, well, I guess today he's going to announce he's yeah, not going to yeah, do anything, right. and he's going to find something to do. Um, uh, if Roddy runs, that's interesting. Well, Roddy, uh, apparently... He has never run for anything. But apparently this time he's telling his friends he's running. So, so... Well, I, this will be a good test for him. Roddy. It'll be a good test for Jim Roddy because he is seen as a very a very nice guy. He's seen as a, a hero of, of charities of and, and uh, a champion of, of... Sort of above it all. That's right. Yeah. The uh, fixer. But some he, by some he's also seen as a carpetbagger, because he's, he's Mr. Atlanta, and he's coming here. Will people elect somebody who really wasn't born and raised here? You know, oh, Pittsburghers, Pittsburghers uh, are tremendously parochial. Very, that I've means a lot that. to them. I've, well, I've been here 20 years, and some people still think, oh, back to Philadelphia. <laughs> well, I've lived here longer than I've lived any place in my life. Yeah, me too. And, uh, and we're that's, not, yeah. That's the way some people think. So that's, that's the thing going against Jim Roddy. I like Jim Roddy. I think Roddy Wecht would be a really good matchup. Who do you think would win? Uh, I think I'd give it to Wecht. That'd be, first of all, it's Wecht. And second of all, the overwhelming Democratic uh, majority in Allegheny County. You'd have a lot of Democrats going to Roddy. You think? Because there's a lot of Democrats who don't like Wecht. Well, I know. I, I never liked Wecht. I like him now. I like him a lot. I don't know. I don't know if I, I don't think I like his politics, but he's a nice guy. Yeah. He's just a nice guy. And he's capable. You got two I capable am, guys absolutely. there, so that'd be cool. You just okay. gotta talk a little simpler. Okay. Well, no, that's part of the charm. Preponderance of one percent. Bernie on line two. You're talking to Fred. 
Yeah, I'd like to ask him a couple of quick questions. All right. Uh, did he ever belong to a union? Yes, I belong to one now, the American Federation of okay. Television and Radio Artists. Yeehaw! I don't know what local it is. What local is it? Uh, I don't know what local it is. I don't know what local it is. Local Pittsburgh, local. Pittsburgh local. Pittsburgh local. Yeah. Uh, AFL-CIO. Uh, what about that? I'd like to know, how much uh, do you think a homeless person, how much drugs and alcohol can they get for a dollar? Well, it's, they, may, they can make a lot of money. You can collect quite a bit of money. You only need like 20, 25 bucks to get yourself a fix, okay. if that much. Uh, and uh, let me tell you a story. There was, and, and the Salvation Army is having a real tough time with this. There's a real great, great, you know, street great, right outside the Salvation Army headquarters, right off of 3rd Avenue, because there's a pool down there, and, and the pool steam comes up, mm. and it's covered with homeless people. The problem is, here's the Salvation Army, all kinds of homeless people camped out outside. And people are saying, we were just outside the Salvation Army. Why can't the Salvation Army do anything about this? Salvation Army offered every one of those homeless people, we can take care of you, we can give you a bed, we can give you uh, a meal, we can rehabilitate you, get you, give, get you a, a, an occupation, train you if you need that, we can do that, but you gotta stop drinking, or you gotta stop taking drugs. They said, no, we don't wanna do that. Yeah. Uh, so what do you do? I, mean, I don't understand what you do. Uh, it's available, but they've got to take a step as well, and, and if they're not willing to take that step, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what the answer okay. is. Okay. Well, I have, I have talked to formerly homeless people and asked what the right thing is to do when somebody's asking. And, and formerly homeless people say, don't, don't give. give them the money. <laughs> give them a, give them the, take them by the hand and say, come here, I'll buy you a hot uh -huh. meal. Give them a hot meal. Do not give them but the you money. See, and this guy says, well, a lot of kind of cold and heartless no, conservative, but, well, you're not going to give them any... But sometimes the right thing to do is, is it's not true. the obvious thing. Tough love from Fred Hansberger. <laughs> Jack, Chuck, Edith, stay there. We're coming at you. Just a moment. Night talk. <laughs> Welcome back. Lynn Cullen, half asleep, I might add, and Fred Hansberger. Trying who's to wake you up. Raring to go, always is. Uh, we're here trying to uh, find points of contention and having a hell of a time. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Isn't that true? That's true. I hate bingo. I, I don't like bingo either. I don't like gambling. I don't like gambling either. Do you What's gamble? going on here? I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know. Jack, hi. Jack. Hello. I uh, want to ask a question. Okay. Hello. Who's oh, asking? Hey. Oh, yeah, hi, I Jack. I to talk to Fred. I'm here. Yeah, you were discussing uh, Bill Clinton's supposed 13-year-old son. Yes, love child. Yeah, I read the headlines, but I wanted to learn a couple of the facts. For example, how old was the boy when the mother first came forward and said to Bill Clinton, this is your boy? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. How many customers did this professional hooker have uh, uh, each night, and how many were white, and how many were black, and how does she know which one was the father of her child? Don't know. She knows. You don't know. DNA so, will tell. So, so what bothers me about you, Fred, and, and sometimes other radio uh, talk show hosts is that you'll take headlines and you'll blast them out, and hey, you're having a great time right. throwing, but you don't know the facts, do you? I do know the facts, as we know it. I just ask you. You ask me. You ask me some you didn't facts. Know what, you didn't know one answer. You ask me the facts. Some facts I don't know the answer. I don't know if they don't know the answer to that question. I don't know the answer to that question. She's passed the lie detector test. Uh, you take what, that for what, what it's what worth. Is, what is, but the DNA, the, the DNA test will tell, won't it? Well, the I, DNA test will tell. No, but that's not fair, is it? That you have. You Why is it well, fair? Hey, I'm going to wait 13 years. Hey, this guy's president of the United States. Yeah. See, I, think I don't I think she's waited 13. She didn't wait 13 years. She talked about this a long time ago. I didn't ask you that. I said, how old was? Uh, was I don't know how old. You asked me how old. And I said I don't know. But this is not a new story. Yeah. This story has been going on for a long time since before he became president. True. This story's been out. True. And uh, nobody's given it any credence because everybody said M much of what you're saying. But now she says, hey, DNA, let's take the test. She's yeah, so I convinced. Mean, he's president of the United States. Let's see. If I can't hook him. Nah, he's, he's, a, he's a deadbeat dad. Mm -hmm. He's a deadbeat dad hypocrite. Let's see if we can hook him. Yeah, okay. 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 Call me back when the DNA test comes yeah. out. All righty. Bye-bye. Hey, don't let him uh, bully you. Have I been bullying you today? Excuse me. Yeah, Lynn, I... You think he's bullying me? Yeah, you're you're cow telling <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, man. Don't because you've got too much on the ball. Now, wait a minute. What? <laughs> I'm kowtowing to you. you are. I'm beating you up. Okay. Watch out, Fred. Chuck! Uh, Chuck, you there? 
Oh, yes. Chuck's still here. Good. Uh, I have one question, and I'd like to watch it on TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, how can the women, especially the women of the United States of America, can still think that Clinton is the greatest with all these women who have been used by Clinton, mm -hmm. and I mean used profanely, uh, still think he's the greatest? I'd like to listen now, okay? Okay. Is that a question for me? Well, I'm think? not a woman, so I don't have the answer to that question. <laughs> I kind of have the same uh, question. I think there's some confusion as to uh, when a woman is seemingly defending the president in this issue, the impeachment stuff. It does not mean she thinks he's the greatest. It does not mean, in fact, I think... How does it mean when the National Organization for Some Women... Uh, threatens Republicans that if you vote for impeachment, we're, you're, you're out. We're coming after you. The National Organization for Some Women. For the I don't Lesbian, belong to Patricia that. I don't, I don't belong to that organization. I think they have mishandled this woefully. They, they, they are. How am, I, how am I beating you up here? How am I be We are agreeing on everything. I'm saying, I'm saying this, you're saying but I agree. I'm saying, saying this, you're agreeing. I haven't said. I know, they you're right. They drive me yeah. crazy. Oh, and the fact of the matter is, is Bill Clinton is a absolutely has a hole somewhere in his soul. Yeah, does. He does not have a conscience like I do or like you do. He is incapable of telling the truth in many respects, but here's the problem for me. He was going about doing his little moderate Democrat agenda. I'd have vo I voted for him twice, knowing he was a Please slime. Vote. Yeah. yeah with a great sense that he was a charming cad. He's doing the job. All of a sudden, he's called up short because of this Monica Lewinsky thing. He's messing around with an intern in the Oval Office. Oh, brother. The, so, oh, brother, say people for like me. Huh? Here's the ticket for 2000. Clinton Dole. Clinton against Dole. Hillary, Hillary against Elizabeth. <laughs> She's got the yeah, highest popularity ratings of any politician. Yeah. No, she can't start it's a sympathy that factor. High. I had a woman call me. She was so livid with me. It's a simp everybody feels so everybody feels sorry for Hillary Clinton. I don't feel that sorry for Hillary. I don't even feel that sorry for Hillary. I look at her and I think, wow, what kind of steel do you have look, in New York? She, she's what up a under the pressure. I mean, you got. You have to admit, she's 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 obviously the 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 smarter of the two, the strong. She's the so. stronger of the I two. I think so. Who the heck knows what's going on with them? He was being the president, and I really do think that his <laughs> private, consexual, <laughs> in the Oval sex Oval. life in the Oval Office, however reprehensible it is is not grounds to impeach yeah, him. Yeah. Now, he got trapped through Linda Tripp's tapes, Kenneth Starr, all this stuff, into being put in a position of lying he about He got trapped it. into doing what he's been doing his whole life, lying about the draft, yeah. about Jennifer Fox. But Fattata, I think you'll find that even a, he lying to us even about, a about Iraq, about Sudan, Afghanistan, Even a majority of uh, senators are, are going to say this is not, That's true. not I agree. enough to convince. He's not going to get thrown out. No. I don't want him thrown out. Because no. I don't want Gore to have an advantage going into the election. Okay. Well. No, this is not a great man. This is a man, a tragic disappointment, because he has a lot of smarts, yeah. capabilities. He's not all, I'm stunned by people who think, see him as evil. He's not evil. He's evil. He's a bad man. He is not evil. He's a bad man. There is something missing. He's a bad man. You, you think he has no redeeming characteristics at all? Bad man. Good actor. Great actor. You don't, so man. you don't trust him, uh, any kind gesture he makes? No. Any tears I, I always look cry. at No, the tears are Never. all phony. They're all phony. Absolutely. He loves not his daughter. He Great didn't thespian. love his oh, he mother. Loves his Great thespian. The, he is. Yeah, absolutely. And okay. I, and I, and I, well, I truly believe well, that. Uh, when he when he bites that lower lip, he's got it all down. He knows what he has to do. Bad man. Not a good one, that's for sure. Ay 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 ay. Well, I'll tell you, we can elect a good one, a squeaky clean one, and he could be a real lousy president. Jimmy I don't Carter. know what we do. Jimmy Carter, that's right. Jimmy None Carter. of us want to Great see him guy. again. He, you know, he was the one president who didn't make the most admired list when he was in office. Good guy. Because <laughs> he should have. <laughs> All right, get out. Stop screaming in my ear. Get out. It's not polite. You could say, please get out. I'm getting out. Hello, hello.
Hello. Let's go right to the phones, huh? Okay. Enough of this. Good idea. A lot of people. We've already talk. decided Bill Clinton is uh, yeah, who cares? Satan's who cares? hand man. Yes. <laughs> Handyman, yeah. whatever, I don't know what. Edith, go ahead, you're on. Hi. Hi. I wanted to say that it's not a matter of what he, whether he had sex with people or not, because that's not going to affect the nation. What affects the nation is that he is a patholog pathological liar, and the news media keeps covering for him. For example, he was out there saying the Social Security is all going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Hey, Social Security cleanup started in 1989 before he was even president. He had nothing to do with it, but there he is having all the credit. And he didn't ma add the fact that the checks come out from the Financial Management Service, which is part of the U.S. Treasury Department, which says they won't be compliant till the year 2001. So maybe the <coughs> Social Security can figure out who got what checks, but the people that give the checks aren't out are not going to be able to give the checks out. That's just one example of how he takes the fact, twists it, makes everybody feel that he's doing a great job when he just lies. That's a that, that's just political hanky panky. They all do it. They all do that. Not Come on, bah. Right. Name me a president that doesn't engage in that kind of flim flammery. Name me one. Well, Reagan. Oh, oh Bob Bob Lowney. Lowney. Uh, Jeez, uh, yeah, gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I may borrow from Mr. <laughs> Cope, Gorgonzola, give me a break. Hello, is this Frank? Uh, just a f uh, breaking news for you guys. Uh, John Ashcraft from Missouri is out. No, just got in. I thought he was leaving. CNN. He just got in the uh, presidential race. Oh, God bless him. <laughs> Lots right. of luck. Yeah, that's right. It's good. I thought he was going to pull out. Is it, do any of you got? I'm going to hang up. Do you guys have any? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Else? We'll be following that closely throughout the day. We'll break in regular programming as soon as another development comes through because the world wants to know about John Ashcraft. John, John Ashcraft from, uh, from the great state of Missouri is a very, very uh, conservative uh, Republican who doesn't have a chance. Snowball's chance. Yeah, you got that. He's like, and chance. I thought he was going to wisely uh, remove himself. We'll break in with further developments, though. Okay, all righty. <laughs> Tom, go ahead. Now, why be so cynical? He thought he was giving us some information. I'm, I'm That's not nice. Thank you very much. Hello, Tom? is this Frank? Tom? Tom. Tom, yes. Tom. Good morning. I wanted to ask your guest, aren't you, I uh, hear so much about if the president was a CEO of a big corporation, he'd been fired for lying. Now, let me ask you what happened to seven, or seven CEOs of tobacco companies who lied in front of the Senate Investigating Committee. I wonder what happened to them. Well, they should be brought up on charges, too. Fired. If they can prove that they lied, they ought to be brought up on charges, too. I'm not, they admitted no... they lied. Get them prepared. Bring them up on Two charges. Two weeks later. Then charge them. Me? No, the government. I mean, I think they should well, be charged. If they lied, they should be charged. Don't you I agree? I ask you, why haven't they? I, well, I don't have the answer to that question. Oh, uh, well, I just thought you okay. might, because you seem to know everything. All no, right, all pretend, right, all right. You bring, you bring out the best in everybody. Jerry, we My got job. one minute. Jerry, Chick, one minute. Hello there. Hi. I uh, got a quick question, follow up for Fred. He said he didn't want to give Gore an advantage going into the 2000 election. Right. I was wondering if he was aware there's a deadline on January 21st that he can only run for one term if that were to happen before that. And I'll hang up. No, I, I, somebody told me that, and I said that on the air, and it doesn't turn out to be true. I said, well, if he takes over for the president, he can only, that's not true. He can go, he can go for the full, it'd be like almost 10 years. If he's a good, you know, Al Gore, if they really... He might be. I mean, he, I get... Oh, Al man. Gore might be a good president? Who knows? He's boring. I don't know. You don't think he's a, a horrible liar? No, I don't think he's a horrible liar. Being. No, no, I, uh, this is a philosophical thing. Okay. This is a purely philosophical... You probably love him philosophically. And I, I don't love him or hate him. I don't know anything about him except he is sort of boring. Yeah, he is boring. And like maybe him. that's what this country needs, a boring president after all Bring this. Bring back Jimmy Carter. Baldy Rawl. Jimmy Carter. All right, you. Okay, thanks for having me Don't on. Don't play bingo if you're homeless. Don't bingo at the church. Don't even Don't bingo bother at the church. Go asking bingo him for church. money. He'll walk right by you and say Merry Christmas. It's Fred Hansberg. <laughs> you can hear him on that big blowtorch from 3 to 6. 3 to 6. That's right, Monday through Friday. We're not on against each other anymore. Thank God. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Tomorrow, Barry Sears. He's the best-selling author of The Zone and Mastering the Zone. He's going to be discussing his book, The Anti-Aging Zone. Apparently, he thinks we can all live forever. 
I'm skeptical, but uh, I'm willing, so stay tuned. That's tomorrow. Stay warm while you're at it.